boom, <laughs> a swift pop, and we're ready to roll. So we're on the board here at, at 110. Palms are sweaty. It's a mock, but it feels real. <laughs> That's right. Better make a good decision. Got to treat it like it's real. Yeah. Practice makes perfect here. And uh, so basically right before us, you know us, if you've been listening to it for a while, we're, we're, we're running back all day. First round. Got to. Got, got to for the most part here. David Johnson goes right before us, which, you know, that that stings. That stings. <laughs> Kamara, Kamara want to pick before David Johnson in this particular mock. Um, so we're on the board at 110. Basically, it's Saquon Barkley, Dalvin Cook, Kareem Hunt, Leonard Fournette are our choices at this point where uh, we, we end up selecting uh, Saquon Barkley here. Saquon Barkley, let's go. Pretty much a easy pick, right? I feel like it's an easy pick. You got to buy your tickets to the show, right? No reason not to. I'm, sure. I've, you got to get giddy about it now when I'm building my team and I'm looking at the team I, because there is no past years from Saquon Barkley. I'm not like as excited when I look at my team as per se, like if I had the the David Johnson on there or right, or right. the let's say I got Dalvin Cook and Kareem Hunt with my next pick. But it's just be, it's just in my head. Like I'm excited mm-hmm. to have Saquon Barkley on my team. I think there's a, a really safe PPR floor there and there's going to be some home runs hit. It's not going to take much for him to be, you know, one of those top picks next year. I mean, he's a rookie, hasn't done anything, and he's already, we're already excited about getting him, saying it's a no-brainer at 110. Sure. And, I mean, uh, you know, Ezekiel Elliott was all basically in this spot when he came into the league. And Saquon, Fournette. Right. Fournette was up here. It was kind of a pretty much a end of the first round, early second type pick um, in a startup last year. And, you know, for Saquon, he comes in, he comes into the Giants where, you know, they just got a new offensive coordinator, the same one that was feeding Dalvin Cook all those passes at the beginning of the year. And you got Odell Beckham and Evan Ingram and Sterling Shepard. So there's no, there's no way that Saquon's facing any type of competition defensively like, say, a Todd Gurley did his first two couple years in the league before Sean McVay came over there and got a system together to keep the defense off balance. So I just feel, I feel like it's a safe pick. Like you said, it stings a little bit to see David Johnson go in front, but at one ten, it's like like base best case scenario. Obviously, we're, you know we t- we talked about it. We're we're on the Fantasy Pros site here with this mock, and it goes so quickly. You really it just you have to kind of look at it after the picks are being made. But when you get at one ten and you see basically at nine eight at one eight and beyond, you had. Alvin Kamara, David Johnson, and Saquon Barkley was going to be the next three. As soon as a, as soon as a guy like Michael Thomas goes in the one six spot and it falls back, gives you a nice bump you, back. You knew you knew you had you you couldn't lose. You right. know you just didn't know which one of those three guys you were going to have to pick from. And Saquon for me, it just there's so much fanfare and there's obviously there's in a rookie draft there's only one person that's lucky enough to get him. So in your in your startups this year, same thing. Like everybody wants a, a piece of Saquon, but if you've got other options, you know, the Zeke Bells and Gurleys and stuff like that in the startup, Saquon's he could go he could go one three, one four, one five, or he if I feel yeah. like one ten. You typically don't even see him at one ten. Right. 10. right. It's and usually that's why you, you have to yeah. pounce if you do see him there. It's usually, you know, David Johnson and that's best case scenario for you at one ten typically. I think that's a fantastic like what one ten, one eight, one nine, one ten. If you're get if you get a shot at the you know, the uh, the king of the hill one one last year was David Johnson. He hurts his hand and there's no know. reason for him to even be back there. And he'll be right back at the front of this thing when he goes through the next season. This happens all the time. You get you don't see a guy on the field and everyone just forgets how great David Johnson was and Absolutely. how many points he puts on your team. There's no reason for him to even be Anywhere near one nine or one ten, he should be one of the first or second guys off the board. I couldn't agree more. And that but the, the one thing about the Saquon here at the one ten for us in this spot is this time next year, David Johnson and Le'Veon Bell will be twenty seven. That number looks way worse than twenty six. You're on even, you, you know, you know just twenty six. You're pretty close to twenty five. Yeah, twenty seven. Yeah, you're, you're way closer to thirty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Twenty seven looks way worse than twenty six. So that's Saquon will have that advantage next year. But the David and we talked about this uh, on the after show a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about what at a startup would would you take this guy or this guy? I think Saquon came in there RB five or six for us because you got to take Zeke Bell Gurley and David Johnson for us. You have to take those guys in front of him just because they've already done it. David Johnson and Bell with their 
amount of targets and catches that they command is just ridiculous. Obviously, Gurley's not that didn't get that volume last year, but his efficiency was through the roof. Right. And Zeke's, I think Zeke's about to get hammered with volume. I think a lot of people agree with that. So. Saquon Barkley this time next year. I just don't see how he's not one ten or better. I, sure. It's just a safe it's pick. It's not going to take much to keep him right further up or right around here. Worst case scenario, he's maybe at the turn right. next year because he doesn't have. But right. it's not going. I don't think it's sliding any further than that. He's going to flash some. He's right. going to hit some big plays and he's going to catch a bunch of balls. And that PPR floor is awesome. And if he hits big, it's going to be ginormous. If he hits big, it's he's one one next awesome. year. Awesome. Yeah. You mentioned the weapons. Twenty two. The weapons around him are very strong. And I like what the what the Giants did to address the offensive line. They brought in Soldier. They brought in Om, Om, Omama. Omame. 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 Draft, Omame. Drafted Hernandez with the 34th overall pick. They get to kick Flowers to the right side. Shuffled this whole lineup, which is They said he's really been looking good. a lot better. Right. Uh, old Flowers there on the, on the right they, side. Well, this, he got some reps last year, you know. This line still gave up the fourth most sacks in the league with 27 and the 10th most hurries with 129 to go along with 24 quarterback hits total of 180 pressures allowed there was lots of injuries on the line they had nine different guys played 250 plus snaps 17 different combinations of linemen throughout yeah. the year so that was bad luck uh with the injuries and then uh, you know they addressed these and they you don't have Odell holes, on top of that. Right, for the whole season. So I think I think Eli is, is perfectly capable, especially if he can get some time. You could see a resurgence for him there. So in summary, that s- strong supporting crew, the line improvements, the PPR floor. And what it boils down to is is having that ticket. Like I know you, Big Co, you like to s- wait to the last minute and scout that ticket and try and save some money on it. But I'm, I'm going to buy my stuff ahead of time so I can relax and enjoy the day. And I feel super excited and relax to have the Saquon ticket already in hand. Well, yeah, before we go to the 2-2, which is the 2-2 is 2-3 because you have 110 or 2-3 pick, is the the options on these back-end picks are just incredible. You know, like I, I've – we do it. We we I've done a ton of mocks, as we said last week, and you guys picked on me about practice. But, like, the more mocks I do, obviously – it's nice to have that front end stud, but the, there's just so much talent in today's NFL. Like this, I feel like going into next year, going into this year coming up, like being at the back end of the of the startup draft feels better than feels being at great. the front. Being at the front sucks. Yeah, you're you're you're, go, you're gonna get a stud in the first round. There's no chance you're not gonna get a stud in the first round this year. It's like last year, it was like the big four, and towards the back didn't feel so hot, you know. And the year before that, the guys in the back that took like the David Johnsons and, and yeah. stuff like that, they they crushed it. That kind of thing, you know. Like this year, I feel like there's ten or twelve. Last year, you could, for instance, you could have got a, a, a you know a running back and DeAndre Hopkins in that back half of the draft there, right? And just did work. Or last year, your second running back could have been Todd Gurley. Sure, and you're just yeah, running, you could have got Gurley and right. Hopkins. So yeah, so this year you're setting up. If you're at the like, and I then said, you traded know, him because everyone told you to. right. If you're at one eight, <laughs> one nine, one ten, you're gonna get your shot at David John. I mean, they're gonna. The thing about the top twelve is it's it's basically it's chalk, but it's not in a direct order. Like there's some you know somebody wants Le'Veon yeah. Bill at one two and Just somebody wants David somebody wants Saquon Barkley well, it's very shuffleable right but if you if you're at one two through like three or, or four it's you know you, then, you, then you get back in there at like two eleven and it's. You're just praying that Melvin Gordon right. is still around, or maybe you have to go up and get Freeman as your next running back if that's what you want to do. Yeah. Um, but at, you're well, so much better off, I think, right now. Like we're in this position at, at ten or nine or eight, just be and being able to kind of capitalize, especially in the front half of this draft with right. where the running backs are. Because you get are. to come on that turn and take a very really strong running back. So let's let's put this bow here on on one ten. We took Saquon. Best case scenario, David Johnson falls to you there, but no matter what, I'm I gotta take a running back for sure. So let's go ahead and move on to pick two three. All right, so we'll get on to the pick here two three, which we're left with a nice buffet of <laughs> running backs here. You got Leonard Fournette, which is why we like to be in this position now. Maybe in some drafts you don't quite get this many picks of the litter, but you're probably gonna get one. Right. Um, so you got Leonard Fournette, Dalvin Cook, Hunt, Melvin Gordon, Christian McCaffrey, which I think Melvin Gordon and Christian McCaffrey, it's pretty safe to say that you could get those guys in most drafts. Um, but it really came down to us for Leonard Fournette, Cook, or Hunt. Um, we decided it basically came down to kind of a two-to-one vote. Me and Big Co. wanted Cook. Jason wanted Leonard Fournette. We took Cook. We operate in a democratic society. 
<laughs> um, so why why Leonard Fournette over over Cook for for the outlier here? Yeah, it's, this is tough because I you know I got in delving into why and I, and to answer that question and it was it was even hot. like at the end of it I was like do I still feel the same way? Yeah, I think so. I mean like it's just Leonard for me he's just so dirty that no nobody wants to tackle this guy. He wants to punish you before you even think about tackling him. And on top of that, he can outrun you if he wants to. Um, he'd rather run through you, but he has another gear that he can kick into. And I think he's underrated, if not given enough credit for what he did in the passing game. He only played 13 games last year, still caught 36 balls for 300 yards. That's an average of almost three catches a game to go with 20-plus receiving yards. So we're getting on the verge of six points a game just off receiving production right there to go on top of averaging 80 yards on the ground. You throw in... 10 total touchdowns, and those are some crazy numbers. He averaged more points, you know, than a Dalvin Cook did, per se. He averaged a couple points less than Hunt and Kamara did. Um, but I just I just like and, – and I can't blame you no matter who you want to take here. I can't blame right. you for taking Cook. I don't necessarily think there's a wrong answer. Agreed. Cook, Cook played four games and averaged less points. It's a small sample size. I mean, Cook has that quick twitch athleticism to go with – He's basically a very similar player to Fournette. I think I just Cook feel gets like injured in a game where he just started off or something, and and probably brings the average down. Maybe, but even even so, looking at the actual numbers, like yeah. Fournette had had the, showed a higher ceiling in those four games, and then he sustained it throughout pretty much the whole season. He did get and benched for a game, and then cut or, or was hurt for a couple of games, and then the production actually went down a little bit in week six after he had that ankle injury, and it reoccurred a couple of times. But he still was showing you a very solid floor and some of a ceiling. But those first six games were, like, yeah, awesome. Well, and you got – obviously, you don't have Allen Robinson for most of the last season, but they get rid of him. But I think they have a good core of guys in there. No no big-time playmakers, really. But it's, it's going to be a tough team to, to kind of cover, He's I, cutting I weight, too, like um, that. They got a decent offensive line. They want to run the ball. They're going to give Leonard Fournette his touches. And if you got the, – the biggest piece of it all is Blake Bortles playing – with confidence he's got his swagger back in uh in a really good way and he's i think he looked great at the end of the season super solid through the playoffs yeah. blake bortles came on real strong and that's going to be the key to being able to not stack this box on because that's what was happening to him last year People, exactly you know all of a sudden mark you know you got to watch these guys out here they had easy pickings last year marquis lee was awesome to have in all your games but if you can make the defense respect it a little bit more um, life will get easier for Leonard Fournette, and he was still making it look so you know, easy, decent out, decently easy out there with having a bunch of dudes in his way. This is true. This is true. To start the season last year, there was no respect for Blake Bortles, and and it didn't. You know, obviously, Al, Allen Robinson gets hurt so early, and then after that, it was stack box after stack box after stack box for Fournette. And yeah, like Jay Wayne's saying, it's you lot. You watch his highlights, and he's you know aggressively seeking out contact, and 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 you know as a rookie, just. I thought maybe a little overboard as far as being, hey, let me let, let line up and let's hit, you know, like yeah. let's let's clang heads, like let's come on, man, you don't have to call out people like which, that, which I, which I like, but isn't the smartest, right? Exactly, yeah. we loved it, but like I think it was maybe after his first preseason game, and he was like, that's easier than I thought it was going to be, yeah. or something like that. I remember well, the Patriots. I also bit, like when Alvin Kamara is like hurdling dudes, but it's probably not the smartest move either. Right. But well, like Jay Wayne said, I think if you're sitting here and you got Dalvin Cook, Kareem Hunt, Leonard Fournette, and your little rotisserie here, I don't think there's a wrong answer. I don't think you can go wrong. I feel like. Obviously, Dalvin Cook's coming off the knee injury, and Leonard Fournette's coming back, and he's probably, you know, obviously given any training camp or preseason setbacks, but I think he's good. Fournette's ankle's probably going to start the year healthier. And, and Jay Wayne said, down, cutting some weight, which has yeah. got to be good for the ankle. And they added, they it, they took a decent offensive line and made it even better, brought in a huge stud on the, for a guard. And so I think Fournette probably starts the season hotter than Dalvin Cook, given his knee potential coming back and he might cooks in a new offense they're they, they take cook, some i don't know it could come out fire they, all they may be they may ease cook back into this thing they may throw him in the fire 100 percent. but I, it wouldn't surprise me at all if the first three weeks of the season it looks like the answer is leonard fournette over dalvin cook here i just for me i love i love what dalvin cook does on both you know through the passing and running game and right. I, you know you got cream hunt here who's in this thing and hadn't been talked about much it, he obviously you know continuously led, gets hated on but con, yeah get, led the league as led, a rookie in rushing yards led the league as a rookie in rushing yards and andy reed's talking about how he, he wants to um get him more receptions and all that good stuff and and the one i think the one thing that i don't hear enough of is saying what 
the difference that what Patrick Mahomes will do, and obviously Alex Smith was crushing it with downfield passes last year, but I think maybe some of that was the defense not respecting him and cre- creeping up tighter to the line than they might have needed to. And I think with Mahomes, I don't think anybody's going to be able to creep up tight to the line with his with his gun slinger mentality and his huge arms. So I think maybe things get a little bit easier for Kareem Hunt on the ground. I could see um, it starting off where they don't respect him <clears throat> and they're they're creep, but I don't think it'll take long for them to back off once they see. Well, even even give uh, maybe they don't respect him as a as a pure passer. Just say, hey, beat us passing it. Right, right. But like I just think like with Tyreek Hill's speed and Sammy yeah. Watkins' speed and his ability to throw at 80 yards, I don't think you can get too close. Even right. if you don't sure. re- just respect his ability for X's and O's to break down and get to his second progression, third progression, I feel like if just ability for him to chuck it up and Tyreek Hill's speed, you got to back up a little bit. So I think that's a good spot. But like we said, just to get into that, if coming off of our 110 pick, the next – the, you know, the 111 and the 112 guy at the turn, both of those guys took wide receivers, and then the 2 1 took a wide receiver, 2 2 took a wide receiver. Right. I don't think you're going to be at the 2 3 and have all three of those choices. But yeah. like we said, if you get in the one, if you're at the 110, you're basically guaranteed the worst a shot at Melvin Gordon. Yeah. You know, even if the turns were in, the, and then maybe even, you're, even if it's Leonard Cook Hunt at the, on that turn, which you know, and maybe probably you're looking to be. If, if all the running back gets snapped up and you're at two, three and you're looking at Keenan Allen, you could do worse. Right. You for know, sure. it, it could you take Keenan Allen, Devonte Adams can't argue with that at all. It's just, you know, I want to have that competitive advantage from week to week on my second running back. And so I've, I've said it before. I'm taking Melvin Gordon. We said it in the ADP roundup show. I'm taking Melvin Gordon over Christian McCaffrey. So if things get absolutely nuts, I'm probably taking Melvin Gordon at the at the second pick. But I can't blame you if you want. If things get nuts and you're looking at Keenan Allen or a Devontae yeah. Adams or somebody as a wide receiver pick, I won't. I won't. I won't be upset with you for it. I'm just my strategy no, I mean, is going to be there's two safe, running backs to get going, safe as it could get with with the receivers there. Yeah. Um. But I, when it comes down to it, if Dalvin Cook's on the board at this pick, I, I'm taking Dalvin Cook every time. I I'm really high on Dalvin Cook this season i want as much dalvin cook as i can get i think this guy's just awesome there's absolutely no wrong answer here i don't think leonard Fournette. i'm fine with having leonard fournette as well um but I, I i like both facets of of dalvin cook's game here um obviously last year you had the you got uh what's his name who was case the quarterback keenum. you had case keenum in there last year and now i think you get an upgrade with a yeah. kirk cousins there um and i just going back and revisiting those games that Dalvin Cook were in it was just super impressive there yeah. was nobody taking it. He, he got on the field and nobody was taking him off the field he looked natural catching the ball just threw him screens out the wazoo that three cone drill didn't show up on there he looked faster than everybody else Absolutely. he could get around the corner he was juking and jiving and he just, looked great rock he looked, solid vision he looked yeah awesome vision just sports science what is it sports medicine vision sports sports science had the fastest eyes they've ever documented he <laughs> and you can, loves it i love that i love it because like yeah you got one guy you got you got one metric over here at the combine saying he had a slow three cone drill which you know he's one of the most impressive running backs coming out of college in a in a while even though we've had plenty but dalvin cook's up there and then you know then that's what you know you got a bad quote unquote bad combine and then as soon as he puts pads on you're like oh my god he's awesome he yeah. makes eight yards you know? look so easy and fluent right. he's just so quick up the field in a hurry he's powerful he just is always falling forward he looks shot out of a cannon he's so smooth in the passing game yeah i mean i can't i can't knock you at all so before, before we go I've, we got we got these backs here <coughs> and, and it'll be rounds and rounds before we get to have this discussion so i want to be able to throw it out now like the dalvin cook pick there is there is some talk about his you know couple shoulder problems. He just blew an ACL, and Leonard Fournette had the ankle issue. Kareem Hunt's durability might be a little bit higher rating on Madden right now, but <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably. But you know, like a Dalvin Cook, you can f- take him and fo- and we, and we later, 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 later on in this draft, we followed him up with a Latavius Murray. You know, if you took Leonard Strong Fournette, move. if you take Leonard Fournette, you can. Later on in your draft, you got a team that's offensive minded is going to pound the rock and and Blake Bortles' ability to run around with his legs gives him you know opens up a little bit. If Leonard Fournette was to go down, you could back him up with a with a TJ Yeldon and then Corey Grant. Corey Grant's freaking awesome on a per touch basis. So like, there's things you can do to say, all right, well maybe. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, Keenan Allen's never been the the picture of health, and Devontae Adams has got concussion issues. Like, there's there's no chance you can take anybody that's not gonna get hurt, right? You know, so and 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 Casey really 
crushed me with this a couple of weeks ago when I was talking to him about this stuff. And he was like, man, everybody gets hurt. Look at, and that's, you know, so if you, if you're talking about, yeah, receivers last longer, but we're our, our, you know, philosophy is to have that advantage on the first and second. I want, I want my second running back to be it better than anybody else's second running back. And right. so you, you take that Dalvin cook you pair him up with Latavius Murray, be who, just as good as most people's and, first running back. Right, exactly. If not exactly, better in my exactly, second RB exactly. spot. And so, and McKinnon's gone, and Latavius Murray looked incredible down the stretch last year. So, incredible. You you take you take that pick, and you don't fit. You, yeah, there's some risk in it, but there's risk in every single pick you make anyway. So it doesn't matter. You take you take that pick, and you grab Latavius Murray at, later in the draft. Just makes sure, you know he means more to you than he means to anybody else. So take him maybe around before you need to, but. Of course, that wasn't that was thirteenth round for us. So that's a great insurance yeah. policy in a thirteenth round. And I don't to, even know if you have to even take him that early. Maybe not, but, but I didn't. Well, we didn't want to miss him. You know, yeah. there and you just but you just you just you just put a put a what it maybe it's maybe it's not a quite one for one. You know, it's obviously not a one for one swap talent out. swap out. Once if, he, maybe if Cook was down, maybe maybe Latavius won't command a target, so it's not even going to be a one for one touch. But what if it's a one point five for one? But touch? I think you, you, I don't think you have a, I don't have a problem thinking that Latavius can come in there and average twelve to fifteen points a game without any problem. Dude, Latavius Murray was an every week starter yeah. in the last five weeks of the season last I had year. Had to. Yeah, I mean, I, the bottom line here is that whether your dude is is Fournette or Cook or Hunt. even Hunt, you know, I'm. Charter talk about charter members of fan clubs love Kareem Hunt, and so I it, I love that he's in this conversation. Yeah, um, it, it kills me to he, still hear so much hate on that guy. So if like he's the only guy left here out of all these, oh, like, I'm I'll, super stoked in to get Hunt. I'm not hating on either, any of these guys. I don't if mind Hunt having is, any one of those. Exactly. Exactly. If if you're if Hunt's the last one on the board here, you're super happy. Right. You're stoked because that just means you get a little bit earlier of a third round pick. Right. You know, like if you, if Hunt's my second running back, I couldn't be excited more happy about it. Like there's he doesn't there, he doesn't quite have that quick twitch athleticism that these other guys I feel like have, but he he's got good patience. He's a and vision. football fast. Yeah. Yes, and he's a lot faster on the field than he is on in the combine or whatever. And he's punishing too. Oh, he wants he's definitely to, there's. It's not fun to tackle broken this guy. tackle after broken tackle with this guy. And Nobody he, wants to tackle him. He's, he's hard to bring a, down. A smart guy. He's awesome in the receiving game. He can line up in the slot. They like you said. They want to get him even more work, which he had 53 receptions, exactly 455 yards, another three touchdowns, and he could get he leaned on even more with this young QB here. And so he's and, and he's got a ridiculous supporting cast yeah. as well. And so, I mean, this dude had 1,300 yards on the ground and eight rushing touchdowns. I don't think he ever had a fumble in college. He fumbled on his first carry of his <laughs> career. Guess how many fumbles he lost the rest of the year? Zero. Yep. Yeah. Love Just it. decided to crush it. The coaches love him. He's going to work hard to do whatever it takes to get better. And so, which, take whichever one yeah, of these no guys you like, but most two, importantly, take a running back. Like, first two picks of the draft, there's very little chance I'm not taking two running backs. Yeah, I, I think that's the our consensus agreement here about we just want the running back our second running back to be as good as your first and or definitely right. way better than your second running back right we're gonna win right. that battle every single week every single week points running back points that's where it's at because these guys can score 100 more points than the next best wide receiver that's yep. what it boils down to so let's go ahead and take a quick break here we'll be back with more married to the game all right welcome back you can find us on the Twitters at the FF Dynasty. We all have individual handles. You can find Jay Wayne and the Kareem Hunt fan club at Jay Wayne's World. You can find uh, Big Co at Dynasty Big Co. I'm at IMC Myers. Let's get into uh, 310 here. So we just took back to back picks. So now we got a slew of players that fall off the board before we pick again, which is kind of the always the bummer of picking anywhere at the beginning or end of a round. So that's just what you got to deal with. And, uh, so let's let the cat out of the bag. Huge bummer, Devontae Freeman, who's always in our third round plans, right, gets taken up before us. Huge bummer. Yeah, and then in a lot of these drafts that we've been doing, uh, at in the third round, Freeman is pretty much on any of my teams, and if he's around, and he typically is around, and I've been able to get him at the three ten at a good handful of times, and I just feel like 
once that happens, I feel like he gives me. I have Freeman as my third running back. I feel like I have so much freedom to do. I feel like you're standing kind of, on the front of the. I can Titanic. do no wrong in the next four or five picks here. Like I'm just. I feel so good about my team. I got three really good running backs. My third running back is probably better than your second running back. Exactly. Like I'm just gonna. You know, I love that. I feel like it makes me be able to build my team however I want. But unfortunately, you we we get sniped here with with a Devonta Freeman. Completely agree. If you, it, I was looking at the DLF ADP, and it's really, I, th- I feel like might have we might have gotten lucky a, a time or two to to be able to run this mock and have Devonte Freeman hang around till three ten. He's really three four, three five, three six. So I feel like if if you get if you're in the three ten spot and Freeman's on the board, I just feel like that you're just you're so lucky to be able to have that setup. Obviously, yeah. not a lot of people not a lot of people are going to be hammering running backs three picks in a row. But just like Casey said, if Devonte P- Freeman is your third running back, that means he's more likely to depend on your settings. But most people have two starting running backs, and let's just say two running backs, two wide receivers, and a bunch of flexes. Okay, so you have if you have if if Devonte Freeman is your first flex, you're going to be there, there's probably going to be some teams that might have gone three wide receivers in a row, but that a guy like Devontae Freeman, who's uh, averages 16 points a week, he's going to have a lot less volatility than the than the wide receiver that might be averaging 14 points a week. That's going to give you eight sometimes. Right. Like Devontae Freeman's a lot more consistent than that than that wide receiver that's comparable to the points that he scores, and because of just because of the way the running back position works. And then if somebody does, if one of your running backs does get hurt. Then Devontae Freeman bumps up and he's, he's your RB2. You You're missing pretty much you know, exactly. no production it really. Gives you, <laughs> it gives you that depth chart of running back. If, if you can have RB1s in your flex, right. then you're built it. You're obviously, you know, you, you have the injury factor in NFL. So some people are going to get hurt. You built in that injury risk. Now you're just like, all right, I, I'm going to combat that by having three awesome ones. Right. You know? Yeah. And then, like Casey said, if you do get a Devontae Freeman as your third pick, then you're you can do no wrong. You still have ridiculous wide receiver options to go forward, and but it's we he's not here for us. So we yeah, are. Yeah, if he is here, like I'm hitting that button so quick. Draft this dude right now. It's not even a stand a up double. Basically, it's, every it's third hit. round, right? Stand up double, maybe even a triple. Right. So yeah. you, you get if the, so maybe if, if you're at like a like you're picking in that spot. Six or seven is probably maybe a little bit more likely to get the more Freeman. likely. And maybe yes. you, maybe you more instead of having Cook or Hunt, you probably have Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon, and, and I said Devontae that a couple Freeman, weeks ago. Right? I said, yeah, I said that a couple. Weeks. You get David Johnson, Melvin Gordon, and Devontae Freeman on your team in the draft, and, and look out, right? You know, so yeah, so maybe it's not quite as a uh, you know. I'm gonna start asking people if they want to double up on the buy in, <laughs> right? Y- y'all always want to play for a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, you sure. You want to <laughs> take side bets? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so what are we looking at with because we don't have Freeman? So right. At, at so we talked about like we did take Freeman right. here, didn't we? We're go. left with basically our narrow down decisions are Ertz, McKinnon, Howard, Cooks, Geis, and T Y. Mm-hmm. Um so we kind of sift through that. Well, your your choices obviously your round three our three our third and fourth picks to me felt like the hardest picks to make. Yeah. You know, yeah, and we say it all the time, like just get through the draft and don't screw it up. You know, so we we wanted to the, at pick three and four here, three ten and four three. They were a lot harder picks to make than one ten and two three. Right, yeah. so much harder, so yeah. much more debate, so much more discussion. How do we get through these two picks and don't screw our team up? Yeah. Right. So it's, we're one thing to consider here is that you know we just waited a long time for this pick, so now we're gonna pick right four exactly. more picks from now or five more picks from now. Which, we get to come back up, which starts to weigh in our decision of kind of who we're going with and who we're eliminating here. So we basically take the we went running back, running back. So we take McKinnon, Howard. And Geis out of the equation for the for the moment, thinking that there's almost no chance that three running backs, all, all three of those running backs, are going to fall off in those picks between where we're picking. Like right. Gronk's still on the board, Ertz is still on the board, Ty is still on the board, Cooks is still on the board, Sammy Watkins, all those kind of guys, right. all still on the board. So there's a, a decent chance that one, we don't mind which running back comes back to us necessarily. Right, just whatever the cheapest one is. And. So then it really basically it comes down to and we get into a discussion of Ertz and TY is what we kind of narrow it down to. Um, and I'm in I'm kind of was in favor of TY here. I just think that we're kind of doing the same thing you did with like a David Johnson. Obviously, TY is 28 right now. He'll be 29 in the middle of the season, I believe. Oh, well, he can't be any good at football. Then. Right. So I think you're kind of 
you had no luck last year. Ty was no luck at all. Averaging luck was not in the air. <laughs> no luck was not in the air. In 2016, you had a guy. This was a guy whose ADP was averaging 14, 11, and 13 through these months that we're in now. Last year, yeah. so like this was a guy just last year who was a top 20 pick. Mm-hmm. Reg- oh, you know, what, don't you have these non-stop. ADP numbers somewhere for the, the last three years of ADP for? Uh, T.Y. Hilton. Yeah, that's what I just said. It was 14, 11, and 13. Right. That's that's crazy. Where the last last three months of 16, they're not they're not the whole his right. whole okay. career. Okay. So those just over the last three months that we're in right now, heading up to the draft, that's where that he was. That was last year. Right. Oh yeah. T- Before t- luck got hurt. Two years right. ago, coming off the good luck season when he led the league in receiving, he was a 112 2 one pick. Right. That's what I'm saying. He's he's silenced all those questions in 16 of being this kind of boomer bust kind of he's got these big plays but you don't get the volume necessarily and then all of a sudden Andrew Luck's hitting him with 90 receptions he leads the league in uh total yardage yeah right um and then he's third in the uh, NFL percent share of air yards basically with you know 39.28 Mike Evans leading that um he had 39.28 of his team's air yards basically yeah. um and six TDs, so he kind of silenced all that. And then n- now you come in with the luck, n- the n- the no luck, yeah, luckless season here in seventeen, and he he drops off the board a little bit. But I mean, what was going on in Indianapolis? Absolutely nothing. Like, Horribleness. It was a, one of the worst, most miserable offenses to watch. Um, and you're just kind of seeing what you're seeing with David Johnson. He's fallen down the list when after this year. I mean, he'll obviously he'll be 29 headed into there, but. I don't think he's going to lose any value and he'll probably creep back up the board some and be one of these upper echelon guys like who else on this team is taking away targets from T.Y. Hilton. He's uncoverable when Andrew Luck's in that like you can't he's always behind the defender yeah, and on top of that he can make your play in one day. So I was having a tough time not taking T.Y. but then you know Corey's kind of responses you get Ertz in the same way that you want to win. Uh, that second running back battle or the first running back battle, it's definitely an advantage to win the tight end uh, battle every week and knowing that you have a top three tight end pretty much week in, week out. You don't have to look at tight ends for a while in this draft now, and you get to win that position every week for the most part. Plus, you know, you got the age and the quarterback that he has and the offense that he's in, all huge bonuses for Ertz here. Yeah. It just sucks to take the tight end in the third a little bit. It, It... Stings. I mean, <laughs> if you feel safe, but it just stings a little bit that it's, you know, well, it's not the sexiest uh, pick alive. Knowing that, you know, we're going to crush these later rounds. I feel like if, if you got a good handle on what you're doing, like like we do and how much time and effort we put into this, I feel like we can we can take that swing on Ertz on the tight end to give us ourselves that advantage because we're going to make up a little bit gr- of ground in the moving in the rounds coming forward right um if you want to take ty i i can't blame you at all i think he's going to be just fine i know the age is a little bit of a factor but i mean julio's sitting here julio and aj green are both 29 years old they got an adp of 13 and 20 respectively um, obviously they I guess maybe have some more name cachet than T.Y. Hilton does. He's put up that If he one wouldn't have epic, had this down year right. last year, he'd be right up there. But my right. point is that, that T.Y.'s... And it ADP, wasn't his play that was down. It was the quarterback play that was down. Absolutely. And I so I think T.Y.'s value can only go up from here, assuming right. that Luck's going to be just fine, which I think he is. But with all that being said, you know, Ertz, he's the second best tight end in the league. And that that's that's not taking Ertz here is not messing it up you're exactly. doing just fine there's another sure. double i don't know that it's a stand-up double but you just hit two doubles in a row well i guess that was t- if you took Devonte freeman but he was gone so we we try we swing for another double and he's just if he's just young in the early years of his long-term deal with an awesome quarterback and who knows how long gronk's gonna be around you know there's right. a discussion to be had about Gronk here because of how many dang points he scores every free right week. well so the Gronk if you really want to make the advantage at the tight end position it's Gronk is the pick right here he averaged 17 points since go- going back to 2012 or however far fantasy pros scoring will let you go back except for one year he's averaged 17 points right. pretty much every single year nobody else is even close to that like all the other tight ends are like 13 to 15 and 15 is when a tight end has a really good year sure so Gronk is but you know, you got the well, back surgeries and Tom Brady and all that stuff. And we all basically said we don't really want anything to do with Gronk in the third well, round because right. it's just not 
That, I that, hate playing against him. I yeah, hate seeing him no on doubt. another dude's lineup. But yeah. there's no way that I can take him here in this third round. Like redraft, sure, exactly. all day, exactly. But Re- I mean, he could hang it up next year. You mentioned back surgery. He's got two of those. He's had a punctured lung, reconstructive knee surgery, forearm surgery. Like these, all these things are just piling up. And I wouldn't be surprised or mad at him if he wanted to hang it up next year, whenever or whenever Tommy and Bill do. Which who knows? I feel like they got. I don't know. I could I could see them all hanging it up after this year, and it's enough for me not to not to let's let's take a double swing. Let's swing for a double here and not like the home run. I well, think. here's the thing: like, there's no debate on Gronkowski's ridiculous. Not that Ertz has been the most healthy guy either. True. Well, yeah, but it's for like there's no deb no, there's no debate how great Rob Gr- Gronkowski is. It, to me, he's the most dominant tight end to ever play. I mean, he's just ridiculous, you know. But like between all the injuries, you know, and there was some talk for a couple of weeks there, he may get a you know, huge contract from the WWE to go do some wrestling, you know, like he's got, he's, he's, he seems like he's made for TV and he's, he's, you know, awesome dude. I'd love to party with him. And then Dre Wayne to to back up what Jay Wayne said, redraft. I mean, he's a second round pick. Like he's a difference. He's a, he's a difference maker. And shit, maybe if he comes back for another year, maybe it is worth it to get two years of Gronk. I I don't know. The the thing is, the, the thing is, is like, yeah, to, 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 build your dynasty team and to take Gronk in the third round right here I don't think it's a horrible idea it's just a really really big gamble like he yes he could be out there crushing it gotta play just, the win baby he's the best when he's out there play, when he plays you just don't know how advantage. much longer you just don't know when it's gonna how long which game he's gonna miss or how big of a chunk of the season he's gonna miss because he usually misses yeah right. and, exactly and, and like yes Zach Ertz has not been the healthiest guy but if you look at if just look at the names on paper you look at you think about Zach Ertz and you think about Rod Gronkowski and Gronkowski's name's got to be in red on like he might get hurt you yeah know, his like it, durability it, on Madden rating is way low. <laughs> gotta be way below <laughs> Zach Ertz you know so now his dominance rating is above him I'm not gonna say it's not but Zach Ertz 27 years old in a in a as tight end friendly system outside right. of Patriots and, and Chiefs, which which Chiefs coming from the same system, yeah. you know. So you got a tight end friendly system, and and to be to for for me like there's a quarterback no, that's ascending into probably oh, elite level, about to be area. one of the best. Yeah, I've already arguably one of the best run, you know quarterbacks in the league, much less young quarterbacks in the league. And Wentz, and then like the what's surrounding him to me is a is completely subpar compared to the Chiefs as far as receivers and running backs and and a target you know hey well just at, recently as far as running back or receivers on the Chiefs I well guess. yeah yeah but I'm saying like Alshon to me Alshon and 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 um Aguilar Aguilar is not nearly Sammy Watkins and, no. and Tyreek Hill and, you know so I just feel like that the target volume for Ertz is as safe as anything and 27 years old so you imagine like that was the difference That's between prime tight end there he just now getting to age. be exactly prime tight end age he's just stepping into that prime tight end age and it, you know Zerk, Zach Ertz was good for a couple of years as a young tight end he was good and we were like well when is he going to take that step up to be in I was better, all over some Ertz you know? a couple years you ago were, you guys right, gave me right. shit about it so and, and I've, what's different between now and what two years ago is just obviously yes touchdowns touchdowns are fluky but just and like playing. Casey said he missed he was missing chunks he's, he's throughout playing, those seasons and he's getting red zone targets from a ridiculously up and coming great young quarterback so for me, like that Slash was Slash head coach schemer. That was the reason why I was like, hey, let's take Ertz and be safer than taking T. Y. Hilton, which I love I absolutely love T. Y. Hilton, but yes, he's twenty nine. He's well, about to be twenty nine. And but he's going to age a lot more gracefully than that big bodied, you know, red yeah. zone threat type tight end. I his T. Y. turning twenty nine doesn't scare me like some wide right. receivers turning twenty nine. I guess but I just feel like there's in the middle of the season, if you needed to trade Zach Ertz, I think you're getting more than what you could get for Ty, T.Y. Well, Hilton. I was trying to talk the team here into taking kind of T.Y., even though I have no problem taking Ertz. Basically, T.Y. could most likely score around 50 more points than Ertz next season and for yeah. the next couple of seasons. Is that worth having that those extra couple of points, or is it worth winning the tight end what, you know what what's correct what's kind of what do you wait more plus like you said Ertz is safe with the age but I don't see T.Y. as being a 28 29 year old old guy who's just going to age out in the next two or three years I think he's really going to help my team win ball games especially if Luck's in there I mean when he had targets was, last year he had six or four games where he had over nine targets mm-hmm. with Brissett and I saw somebody give this stat on Twitter and I, I don't recall who it was I'm not meaning to 
steal anybody's content here, but I, it was very interesting that when he got more than nine targets, he's has seven receptions for 153 in a touch, seven receptions for 177, no touches, five receptions for 175 yards and two touchdowns, six receptions for 100 yards. I mean, you're targeting this guy on a, on a well, shitty like, offense. He's uncoverable. He's uncoverable. And when Brissett was targeting him and getting the ball, he was still, there it is. It's He was doing what T.Y. does, and that's what you expecting from him Completely. you can throw 30 more targets on there and all of a sudden or 30 more receptions it's a, he's having a fantastic year right well again we're at 310 here and you got zach Ertz, brandon cooks gronk ty hilton darius geist jerry mckinnon sammy watkins you know like doug baldwin jordan howard you got people to pick from that's going to help you win it's not about these guys aren't going to help you win. Right. Like it, and it, but like yours, and T.Y. Hilton's doing absolute work when he gets those targets. And a lot of it came down, yes, we all hope that luck will be fine. We all hope that luck comes back. And he's, it's just a better football season when luck's on the field for everybody, not even just fantasy. But if you, like, if you look at week to week, game logs is in the same manner that J- Casey just called out T.Y. Hilton's. If you look at the week game logs for Zach Ertz last year, you can clearly see the tight. If this was a best ball situation, a best ball lineup, you could pile on two or three tight ends at the end of your bench, your Jared Cooks and those kind of guys, and you can probably patch in similar production over the computer picking your best tight end every week. But if you got to plug in a tight end every week, there's Travis Kelsey, there's Gronk, there's Zach Ertz, and, and you know maybe Evan Ingram and everything typically else. Typically, the point maybe Kyle, differential drops off. Right. Then bit. you got Kyle Rudolph, who's still awesome, and you got a maybe you got a potential riser in Trey Burton, maybe into that Chicago system. And it's just, but it's just and then Delaney Walker's 34 years old. And you're hoping for Njoku. You just don't and those know. Other guys to get up you just there, don't but it's know. Not there. But if you get Zach Ertz, you you do know. You right. Know? You know. And I mean. To go back to that, uh, you go back to 16, TY's averaging 17 points a right. game, and it's it's nice to have. And, and like in 16, there's 370 completions for Andrew Luck. 90 of them obviously go to TY. The only other person that's close is Doyle with 59. The rest of the team has 30. There's still nobody you want to talk about being on a team to that you're definitely going to see some volume and some targets going your way because there's nowhere else, to, nobody else to take them away from you. There's certainly nobody on the Colts right now that you're worried about taking any sort of targets couldn't, away from T.Y. Couldn't Hilton. agree more. Couldn't agree more. But after we take, we took Ertz. We did. And so in I a, lost it, the battle. Right. And I, I don't, I'm not upset it, about losing exactly. the battle. It was a safe pick. But in a couple of picks here, we'll show you some wide receivers that are comparable to those points per game that T.Y. has. And which, I think which that's is the what reason really we helps took me Ertz. getting off of the, the I, T.Y. thing and conceding here because and, and, and you get some production. Later on in the draft, I think we were talking about, hey, maybe we would have been happy if we didn't take Ertz. But at this point in the draft, coming out of this third round pick here, in a couple of in the next couple of rounds, you can pick comparable wide receiver points per games. But once you get off of the Zach Ertz, Gronk, and maybe we, who knows what Evan Ingram's going to do with with the wide receivers healthy this year, um, you I don't think you come back and you take a, a, a tight end that you feel is good about. You know, you we took Ertz and we moved on. Didn't have to worry about tight end for like Jay Wayne said. You don't have to worry about tight yeah, end for a you while. Just set it and forget you it. Just and you're set okay. it and forget you it. You know you're going to win that battle did, most weeks. You, so you, I'm okay you, with the. You, with you that. did what you had to do. You took Ertz. You you got your tight end spot. You got a you got a week to week advantage over almost every other team. You're able sure. to safely say that I'm going to outscore that guy's tight end most weeks by eight points or so i think or yes. maybe not quite that but somewhere around there you're gaining an advantage somewhere not many tight ends are going to be going eight for 80 in a touch right and if they do you didn't put them in that week that's the that's the difference you know the right the, the guys that that at the end of the list here that are that have chances to be good like cameron Brait's going to crush some weeks and he's going to leave you hanging and tie i think remember the first couple games that austin hooper had last year amazing he couldn't be tackled and then he was nowhere to be found you know yeah like there's just Things to, if Jordan Reed plays, he's one of those guys. Abso- who's up exactly, there, but. exactly. There's 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 tight ends points to be had. It's just a lot less comfortable and a lot less yeah. confident than a Zach Ertz. So right. definitely, don't not upset about this pick, but it's not it's not sexy in, in any way, and it it stings a little bit to, to go ahead and I know. take this kind of player in the third round. But it, it, you're gaining an advantage every week in the tight end position, and he's young and in a, in a favorable. Right. offense and system so well, we got our tight end spot locked up we'll come back from the break and get into uh the rest of this draft see how we recovered from uh handicapping ourselves with a tight end in the third round <laughs> for your pleasure boom and just like that we're back a whip track went this from the tail 
I left you some space there. I knew you wanted to get that in. <laughs> Dying to use the soundboard. I haven't used it much. I have, we, you, Big Co earlier was like, if you don't know, now you know. And I was looking everywhere for my button, and, and then I had I found. And if you don't know, now you know. Yeah. Huh. So that was for earlier. That's <laughs> a little makeup. A little makeup soundboard. All right. Yikes. So we left you off at uh, at three ten. We took uh, Zach Ertz. We had a ty discussion, and now we're back on the board at four three. Um, the Four picks that picks fall later. off were Cooks, Gronk, Ty, and Geis. Um, if Geis doesn't get sniped from us right there, I think the room general consensus is we like Geis next. Staff pick. The st- I think we could staff pick. They would have been really good taking Geis there. Got to get those tickets too. Got to get the tickets to the guys. Sure, show. sure. So it's crazy that the gap between Saquon and Geis is for you know mm-hmm. that many rounds. But anyway, um, so basically we're left with Howard McKinnon. And Doug Baldwin now creeps onto our, our board, and it comes down to those those uh, three guys. And McKinnon and Howard, we talked about in the ADP episode. They're kind of polar opposites. I can't be mad if you want one or the other. Um, but for us, we're gonna go with Mc, we're gonna go with McKinnon, and we're gonna put him up against Baldwin here. I think this is a, a spot in the draft that we come to a lot, right? Um, so let's absolutely. And and Big Co was referencing it on our last pick. He said, you know. Picks three and four were the hardest ones to make, and but it's also this is why you wait to take a wide receiver because you can still have the ability to grab Ty in the third and or Doug Baldwin in the fourth. Now right. there's no chance I'm taking both of those guys, but you but could. I don't ha- you, but could. you could. I can't be too mad at you if you do, but I want a running back with one of those picks, and so because we just took Ertz. For me personally, that takes me out of the running to take a wide receiver here because I really want that third running right. back, and there still are some awesome options here. And you can, you know, I, I think I said a couple of weeks ago that I'd rather have Howard over McKinnon. I think I think I'm I think I'd just rather take McKinnon. I feel a little safer there. Waffling. Let's get this. Let's get this Kyle get back. Some syrup in those nooks and crannies. Sure. And you know, if <laughs> douse it up. Of more syrup, gotta be syrup heavy on the waffle or anything that just gets syrup. Butter pecan, the more syrup, the better. Just regular syrup. Let's not get too hasty here. Butter pecan. I like regular syrup. Anyways, maple. I like scissor. All right, so (laughs) I've I've never had it. We basically, we basically, when I get when I get a cold, but (laughs) when we cut it down to McKinnon and Howard, and we cut we cut it down to McKinnon, we're going versus Baldwin here. We'll start on the McKinnon side. We talked about this in the ADP episode, what we like about him. Some people are saying, you know, there's no way that he could be worth where he's picked when, you know, why what, why did he get beat out by? I mean, he got beat out by Dalvin Cook. Let's not get too mm-hmm. crazy here. Yeah. I, and to start this conversation off, I don't necessarily like McKinnon as yeah. a player. We were telling you last year to pick him up because he was so cheap and his profile is very athletic. So it's a good stab when he was very cheap last year. Right. Now, he was in cheap money. I like him because he's with Kyle Shanahan. He's in Kyle's hands. That's it. Like that. And that's Kyle's and and hands. I like the way he profiles of what the and how I think Kyle's going to use him. I think it fits together. He picked him to come do what he needs him to do, be his mismatch. And I think there's just a safety in the PPR floor here. I think in our discussion, what I came away with last week was that we basically think that Christian McCaffrey and Duke Johnson. There's no reason that Jarek McKinnon should, and they were your back-end RB1s last year. There's yep. no reason McKinnon shouldn't be right there at, at that threshold. I think at the at the least, he could be right in the middle of that pack. Um, but just the PPR and what Kyle's going to do with him, I think Kyle Shanahan, I keep calling him Kyle. We're on a first like name you basis. Know yeah. Is, is I just think it's pretty safe. Yeah. Well, that's, you know... And people are on his jock I, so much I right don't, now. Too. I don't love him as a running back. I don't love him. I just like him in the situation that he is, and I like that he can catch the ball, and he's quick, and he can run around. And to be on top of what Duke and Christian McCaffrey, he's going to get more handoffs in his gut. No doubt. Well, that that's the thing. I, I, first, I was going to say, for me, I love Doug Baldwin, and I don't think – we talk about you know this is not taking Jarek McKinnon and saying hey we're not gonna do it we're not gonna not mess it up and not take Doug Baldwin like right. I think if you take Doug Baldwin in the fourth round that's not messing it up no too. I don't that think is so. another that, solid this double is a there. straight this is a straight philosophy pick here on us by, by us here like I, I have no I have, I love drafting Doug Baldwin with his discount that he's getting this year and he's just one of those guys like yeah he he's obviously getting up there in age but Doug Baldwin he's got 
from to me, he's got plenty of years left in the if tank. If you could have gotten the third running back in the last pick, that then right. Doug Doug is fantastic all here. day. Yeah, I'm gonna go Doug Baldwin if I just got Devontae Freeman and basically my first wide receiver. Yeah, boom. Well, I'm torn in the end of the third and the early fourth because I want three players in those two picks. I want a tight end. <laughs> right. I want a good running back, and I want Doug Baldwin. Yeah. Right. So it's really hard to squeeze four guys into th- into three, three guys into two. two picks. But yes, yeah, so it's pretty much they call impossible. that. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't know what the kids are calling that. I don't know days. what they call that either. But so <laughs> to to some to, letter. To expand on what Casey just said about Jarek McKinnon and Doug Ball and and uh, Duke Johnson and Christian McCaffrey, like last year, Christian McCaffrey and Doug Baldwin were RB like nine and ten and or ten and eleven Christian or McCaffrey nine and ten and, or and, uh, Duke, Duke Johnson. Duke Johnson. Uh, did I say Doug Baldwin? My bad. So Duke Johnson and Christian McCaffrey, based on catches and you know, there's somebody's got this stat going around that a catch that a target is worth like. 1.8 or 2.2 whatever p- fantasy points more than a t- than a rush than a you know than a, a rushing attempt like obviously because if you catch it in a ppr league you get a point for just catching it right mm. so that's how like, the math works that's how that math works so here i didn't think math counted for anything right <laughs> so but like last year christian mccaffrey got 80 catches and and was a back-end rb1 on 117 attempts and 435 yards and, and two touchdowns so like, Rushing. there's no chance that that Jarek McKinnon, Jarek isn't McKinnon good. isn't going to have those ca- those rushes more like, than 120 rushes. Last got year, exactly. There's no way it's not over 200. They right. already did. They already they got that player in Matt Breida. Matt Breida got his hundred carries last year and 400 and something yards and two touchdowns. They got that guy. They bring even if if the work if they split it. Mc, Carlos Hyde had 240 carries last year. Yeah. Okay. And he had and he had 80 something targets himself. So he had 80, he's second on the team in in targets. 87 for 59 catches. Like this is like you said, the Kyle Shanahan goes and picks Jarek McKinnon. I don't think Kyle Shanahan Kyle Shanahan can do a bunch of awesome things, but he can't make Jarek McKinnon a bell cow running back per se. But he can, with his scheme, make him put Bell Cal running back numbers up. Right. Like he's not going to make him, you know, all of a sudden, Le'Veon Bell. But yeah, he's I don't think he's getting 25 a carries he's, a game. Right. But he, but Carlos Hyde got 240 and Matt Breida got his 105. Matt, like if the worst case scenario, if, you know, even if he just gets half of that, he's still got he's still got what what Christian McCaffrey had last year, right? You know, so even if and even, on top of that, you don't have there's probably some more touchdown upside with. Uh, McKinnon yeah, then because we said that before there's no chance like Jimmy G's not taking carries at the one like like I mean Cam he might hear or there but it's they not might a quarterback be, yeah, sneak but yeah. it won't be a quarterback draw Jimmy does what Jimmy wants okay <laughs> yeah so if, I mean Jimmy likes <laughs> Elaine <laughs> so if McKinnon I think I think there's no chance McKinnon doesn't get I've said it, I think he gets 50 carries more than than McCaffrey I think okay? there's no way he doesn't get 200 I, yeah exactly and that's basically that's like, 80, that's like 80 more that's 80 more than McCaffrey got last year as a back end RB1 on the catches. More math. I like so, it. I, more math. It's actually so, 83, but whatever. I, I, I feel like... <laughs> Who's counting? Who's, Who's counting? counting? The, 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 and, and, it, and let's go back to safety and back messing this up. Okay, so you got... If you take McKinnon where we're taking McKinnon, you got the Kyle Shanahan... And, it, you know, don't tune out if you don't like coach talk. This is real life. Like, if you don't believe in coaches, then go back and watch the Rams last year. If you don't believe in coaches, go back and watch the 49ers, 49ers come before dig them, they had Kyle dig Shanahan. themselves out of a hole when they bring in Kyle Shanahan. So McKinnon's safety net is just the the PPR floor, the scheme running back upside in the attempts because he's going to have the defense off balance just like that's what he does. They don't know exactly which way to go. The run, and, and Casey will jump in here with some some – uh, scheme specific stuff that they do to clear up rushing lanes for the running back, but it uh, goes right back to what I said about the Dalvin Cook pick. If you don't think Jarek McKinnon is built to handle what he just got paid to do, because let's but face it, he just got paid and handpicked by Shanahan to come do this. What they can get out of it next year, only then, five million dead. Then yeah. you can, yeah, and that's uh, sure, maybe may, not that much. But you can come back and take Breida so much, right. like like that's, that's the thing. You 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 and and this is not like a a stab in the dark handcuff pick like Latavius Murray looked ridiculously good at the end of the year last year so good in fact that he cut into McKinnon's time as a as right. a rusher well, and a people receiver. want to argue well how come he couldn't just beat out 
Latavius and be the only be the main guy there. Like Latavius was playing great. That's Latavius why. was playing great. Exactly. So you got Dalvin Cook in the second round, and you take Latavius Murray in the thirteenth. You take Jarek McKinnon and his ridiculous PPR floor that there's no chance. And I said this a while back about the the back end the 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 difference between a top end RB one and a back end RB one is huge. And this year, when you bring in you know a, another good rookie running back class. Like the back end of the raw RB ones might be inflated, and so the back end, the top end RB twos are going to be filled with like the Duke Johnsons, the Christian McCaffreys potentially because of what happens when you bring in another set of Darius Geis and Saquon Barkley, and maybe Ronald Jones is good, Rashad Penny's opportunity, all that good stuff. There's just more players, more talent at the running back position, so maybe a back end RB one is actually a top end RB two this year. But Jarek McKinnon's in, uh, increase on what those what the Duke Johnsons and the Christian McCaffrey's got from a pure running st- uh, rush attempts to you know factor last year is going to bump him up into that group and st- I think Jarek McKinnon's still one of those back end RB ones where the Duke Johnsons fall backwards obviously so I, you got that and then you got the the safety of the system right. so if McKinnon gets hurt. You got you just take Breed at the end of the draft and back him up, and you still got the system. Like, why wouldn't you want all the running backs, the points that you can get? And Breed could still potentially be that quote unquote flex starter because he kind of was last year in spurts when they really got going. And just like maybe McKinnon, I mean, Breed is already in the Tevin Coleman role in the offense last year, which they didn't have Jimmy G until the la- end of the season. Yeah. And Breed looked really Six good. And at Breed looked really good at the end of the season in the Tevin Coleman role. And so why not take the Breida? It, you, you just back up. You just double down on the Jarek McKinnon pick by being able to back him up with Breida. Right. And then, so you, yeah, if something happens, then there's a lot less question mark and you got Breida getting even more volume than McKinnon. For sure. And, and Joe Williams is, is free at the end of the Absolutely draft. Absolutely So you could get both of those guys if you wanted on a deeper roster. Um, and the 49ers, the, the, the scheme part of it is, you know, a lot of teams run a lot of 11 personnel. The Niners are on. They run a lot of 21 personnel, like way more than anybody else. It's not I don't even think it's close, which is one tight end, two running backs, which the two running backs is basically a fullback. They use a fullback. Use check, use check use. is the man you saw in Atlanta. Their fullback was the man. He got DeMarco. Right. Got a big contract. <clears throat> he was awesome. So they they are able to gain advantages by basically you're using you're bringing in a, a, a the line, you're getting an advantage because of the linebacker situation of who has to be on the field when you're in this personnel package. Right. And then on top of that, like you got a good blocking fullback who can also catch the ball. And it opens up a lot of like crackback plays for inside, inside and outside zone plays. And you can use a lot of misdirection with the fullback to kind of trick where you think the play is kind of going to. Um, and it just opens up a lot of lanes. There's multiple videos on, on, uh, the internet here to, to <laughs> show <laughs> examples of how they how they use it and what they do. I'm not going to try to explain it to you over. You can Google uh, it. it's worth a Google <laughs> over the airwaves here, but they they do a, a great job. And then on top of that, they run play a ton of play action, which opens up everything else for this team. And the, so they have to have a run game. You're not going to not have a run game because they rely a lot on this play action to open up the big plays down the field. So McKinnon's going to get his. They signed him. They gave him. Uh, running back one money sure and Absolutely. they're gonna maybe he's not gonna get 25 carries a game but he'll get you know 15 and he's gonna get plenty of balls thrown his way there's i just don't see any way that he doesn't end up being in the back end of that thing and the back end of the uh, rb1 discussion i totally agree with all that i'm i'm pretty confident in what i'm gonna get out of him this year or at least the opportunity he's gonna get they gave him 15.7 million guaranteed i misspoke earlier if they were to cut him in 2019, there would only be 1.5 million against the cap. Right. So they could get so out there, of this contract with him. There if they is a little, to. a little bit of risk that if it doesn't work out for whatever reason, that they could get rid of him. <clears throat> right. And so if and in for, that for not much, which is a smart move by which the 49ers. is another fantastic move by the 49ers. Yeah. Like great, but I great think insight to be like, all right, well we like this guy, and but maybe it doesn't work out, and we can get out from underneath him, and maybe we just bring Tevin Coleman in here, who's a free agent year. next year. That's a good point. But you're, this is a system pick, right? Like, no, absolutely. Is, and 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 like that's a you but know. But they did give themselves an out at least, right? Well, yeah, but obviously let's just let's just assume it works decent. Like maybe it does. Maybe it's not the best thing ever, but it's just it, like situation is what you look for in fantasy football. Right. Situation and volume, and like. Like you just Christian McCaffrey had three games last year where he got more than double digit uh, 
attempts. Right. Like there was three games. It was 12, and it, not, it wasn't even like 18. He had one game, he had 12 carries, one game, he had 15, and one game, he had 13. And and that was it. And it's not like he had a bunch of nines and eights either. A bunch of fours and sevens yeah. and sixes. So like just based on volume alone, like McKinnon, there is no obviously given health, but every pick you make is given health. Given health, there's no chance McKinnon's not a back end RB one. Right. And so that's on our team. We've already got two dominant RB ones on our team. Yeah. So our flex Trying starter. To get this we, third back. we said how great, how how happy we would be if we were able to get you know. Um, a Devonte Freeman on our team, but as with the care with the with the the catches that he's going to get and the increased carry volume over a Christian McCaffrey, it wasn't wouldn't surprise me one bit if Jarek McKinnon is averaging as many points a game as Devonte Freeman does. Sure, and yet this is a situation pick again. We just talked about grabbing Breida, and there's nothing that says the 49ers that don't draft or sign you know draft a high end running back next year or sign a you know Tevin Coleman off free agency, but that. There's plenty of things that everybody says are going to happen next year and they don't happen. Right. Like there's the 49ers need all kind of stuff and there wouldn't be if it works hey, whoa, then whoa. McKinnon the, if it works then McKinnon stays in place, Breed is a backup, maybe Joe Williams even comes alive this year, but that you grab a couple of those guys on the end of your bench to back up your investment here mm-hmm. and you move forward with going and saying, "Hey, I got two high-end RB1s in Saquon and Dalvin. I got a low-end RB1 with Jarek McKinnon with middle up, middle RB1 upside. If he, you know, if he's crushing it on the ground, there's going to be home run cut. The dude's obviously quick and elusive and fast, like with the way the scheme works. And more TDs. And you say, the, you say, you say the Shanahan and the 49ers use a but like that his system is built off of play action and misdirection. But you, when you think play action, like my you, most people, when they think play action, you're thinking about a play action pass and a chuck it deep. Like it's got kind of goes back in to where like the way the Saints make you defend all parts of the field. Yeah. Like when Kyle Shanahan does a play action pass, he doesn't necessarily chuck it deep. He can throw it to the wide res- to the running back. You do the play action and then the running back leaks out and now you catch it on the in the flat over right. here and you got space. And that space is what Jarek McKinnon McKinnon needs to look amazing. And uh, I just and there's I'm, nobody better to get him in that space. Exactly. Than Kyle Shanahan. Exactly. So I just I'm, Totally fine taking this swing here. So did so we basically ended up taking the swing on McKinnon. We didn't actually say we took the, we were going to go Baldwin versus McKinnon. We, obviously, we just talked for five minutes about McKinnon here. Mm, I'm like 10 it's, or it's, uh, So quick, 30 seconds more. But, I, <laughs> but Doug Baldwin, right? Doug Baldwin pick would be a better asset. I feel like it may be I, safer. I don't I, know. I feel like Doug Baldwin as a pick here at the four three would be a better asset. Right. But I think the way we're building our team and the, like Jay Wayne mentioned earlier, I feel like the way we're going to make up ground, but rounds five moving forward with building our team on the back end, like you know anybody can make. You're going to get good players in the first four picks if you just right. go straight ADP. Just pick. And the, there's you know, still plenty of running backs to to stab out throughout here, but I just feel like McKinnon's got a decent chance to be really good rather than some of these other guys might need a little bit more to be on McKinnon's level. So I'd like to elevate him here and grab him. But like you said, Baldwin does make you feel safe. You can set it and forget it every week. Um, he's Russell's boy. They're schoolyardy kind of together. Mm-hmm. Oh, once the play breaks down, Nobody they're just better. so on, in sync together. He's, he is a little older, but we've expressed the sentiment many times. We don't think that he's going to be one of these guys who ages out and his play tapers off we think that he could play you know up into the 30s 33 34 area without seeing too much of a drop off and he can play inside or out i know a lot of people think he just plays the slot but he, he moved around quite a bit last last uh he's a crispy route runner last year and you can you can google that it's worth a google if you want to find out what those percentages are but i mean 15 he's wide receiver 10 16 he's wide receiver 8 and 17 he's wide receiver 11 so three years in a row in a wide receiver one Love and it. I don't see Love any it. reason that that doesn't happen again who again we talked about T.Y. Hilton and market share of stuff going on who's over in Seattle that's taken away from what Doug Baldwin's doing they had a terrible offensive system last year you have to think their offensive line gets a little better this year and and you know that the offense gets back to where it once was and even still Baldwin's been crushing so it just makes you feel safe which is why we like and struggle a lot of the times figuring out if McKinnon and Baldwin ends up being a discussion we have a lot right in this part of the draft so we went with McKinnon here because we wanted the third running back on our team right now and secure that well we're going to continue to take stabs at running backs but absolutely but you got to get that strong third running back and since we took a tight end in the third round that's what got my vote to go McKinnon over Doug Baldwin here when normally I'd probably be more on the Baldwin side of this so let's go ahead and take another quick break and we'll be back with uh, more of this 10-spot draft for your pleasure. 
What was that? Welcome back, everyone. Hit us up on Twitter if you feel so inclined, at the FF Dynasty. We're going to keep rolling uh, from the 10 spot here. Big Co just farted. Is that what that was? No, it's a gnat flying. Okay, <laughs> much better. <laughs> oh, a lot better option. <laughs> For everyone involved. Let's. Uh, what, what, what pick are we at here? We're at 5'10". Um, so we have feels to, like we're deeper into this draft than we really are. <laughs> to recap, but. we have Saquon Barkley at the one ten, mm. and we came back and got Dalvin Cook. Of course, uh, we followed that up with Zach Ertz, and then we took McKinnon over Baldwin in this last pick, and then a bunch of picks fall off the board. Um, so we don't have the opportunity to go Baldwin here, but we're looking, we're starting to look at receiver, and this is typically in a lot of the drafts where we look at start to look at really look at receivers and decide to put them on our team might be our first um, receiver. might be the, the first round. could be the second if he took a Baldwin type guy or you know but typically the conversation comes down to Marvin Jones around this area Golden Tate and Demarius Thomas is where that situation usually lies and we're going to get one of those three almost every single time right right um, this instance Tate's off the board right Tate's off the board so we didn't that sometimes the decision gets made for you mm-hmm. on that one Tate Tate went and Marvin Jones and DT Demarius Thomas are still available. Um, what do you guys think? Obviously, we the pick is we took Marvin Jones right. um, over Demarius Thomas here, uh, which I, I don't really think you can go wrong either way. But what do you what do you guys think? Yeah, I think we ultimately made the decision based on you know we try not to make too many decisions based on a two year age difference. Yeah, but that was a, a big kicker in this in this instance, whereas Marvin Jones is two years younger than Demarius. And then when you look at what the Lions have going on from a contract standpoint, they could get out of Golden Tate could not be there next year. Next year, yeah. Marvin Jones is locked up long term. Stafford's not going anywhere. He, they, he could potentially. I think they have an out next year for Marvin Jones if they want to take it. Um, but I don't I don't see that happening. They just gave him like a so, four yeah. year, forty in, million dollars. In two thousand nineteen they could get out. Um, but I don't I don't see that happening. He'll be signed until twenty twenty. They're not they're not gonna get out from Marvin Jones. He's a special player. You saw what he could do putting together a season and being healthy last year. They'd have with, to take a three point two million dollar hit. Right. So this Demarius Thomas and and I think they have similar ceilings to me. Um they're just probably getting there in different ways. Marvin Jones is a little bit more of a big play kind of guy. And Demarius Thomas, when he was at his peak, was the big play mixed with the volume guy, which sure. made him that ridiculous. But he hasn't had a quarterback. So finally he gets a quarterback. So, and I like Case Keenum. I think he'll be able to get Demarius Thomas the ball just fine. But I gave him the nod as well on on the two years in the cut. You get to stay with Stafford and and this team until 2020. And I'm I'm I think Marvin Jones is an awesome player. Yeah, well, it was I, I took I'm I'm big on Marvin Jones myself, and I was trying to remind everybody coming into last year the way he looked at the first four games of the year before that, looking ridiculously good with Stafford before he got hurt, and he came out and exploded. Was like wide receiver twelve last year, and yes, like Jay Wayne said, he's a couple years younger than Demarius, and makes us feel good. I Demarius is like that might be getting the Fitzgerald treatment you know like Demarius the disrespected because like, he's quote old well no he because he had a couple years with it. no quarterback right yeah now all of a sudden not just Case Keenum is you know what Carson Palmer was when he got signed but you know as a Carson Palmer's a lot more proven NFL quarterback but Case Keenum like it's a you step know, up from a carousel ride that was whoever was there yeah. yeah absolutely and and you know a lot has been made about what Case Keenum was able to do last year with Thielen and Diggs and transfer it over to, to you know, um, Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders. Like, Demarius could step right into, hey, look at me. I remember what happened when Larry Fitzgerald had a couple bad years with no quarterback. He was still good, but he wasn't awesome. Demarius could be, hey, I'm, I'm going to be awesome for three or four more years. And I think that is completely in play. Uh, but the explosiveness and the red zone, uh, just the, you know, that obvious connection that Stafford and Marvin Jones showed last year. I think Marvin Jones is for me, the play that I make here more often than not. But uh, you know, if, if you're sitting there and Jones is taken and, or you're just juggling it back and forth again, Jay Wayne said it was 28 years old versus 30 year old of the perceived market value this time next year, Marvin's 29 to Marius is 31, you know, like yeah. you, yeah. not that we're, pay, not that we're making these picks to make trades, but I love, you know, thinking about what sure. I would do if I had to make a trade with this or that guy. I think that this is one of those reasons why you can pound those running backs early and you still get a back end wide receiver one potentially with Marvin Jones. And I mean, you could still 
get if Golden Tate and Demarius Thomas are still there, you could potentially get both of those guys back to back right here. Absolutely, if you we pick again in four more picks. You know, four more will go off the board, and then it's our shot. So you know, it's it's possible we could get that Demarius guy again on right. the round. Demarius, you know, quit eating meat. Don't like to hear that. <laughs> Uh, then maybe that was why he fell off last year, not the quarterback's fault. But I, mean, I, probably, I think he was still good last year. It just yeah, you know, with no this, quarterback. Another and, thing weighing here in going Marvin Jones over to Marys Thomas is that you can get Emmanuel Sanders so much later, right? So much cheaper, and he could potentially return you similar dividends because if. But he's another tick on, or two older than the Marys he even is. I, I, but he doesn't have the same type of... He doesn't play the same way. He's not making those ridiculous laying out in the end zone. Oh, that's kind of what Emmanuel on. Sanders... I mean, Emmanuel Sanders Emmanuel will Sanders lay out for a ball. Now. He'll lay be, out for a ball, but he's not like going up in the air and getting hit by dudes and, and coming down on he's a He's not your big body receiver. He's more along the frame. lines of a Marvin Jones in this situation right. than Demarius. You know, yeah. he's, Marvin Jones and Emmanuel Sanders may be a little bit more similar players than... Well, Demarius Thomas is a physical beast, right? right. Like Mar- Marvin Jones, like yes, Marvin Jones is not as physically dominant as Demarius Thomas is. He just he's super fast. He's a really good route runner, and he, he's a red zone presence. But he's not the physical dominant player that Demarius Thomas is. But that he, just means to me, like he hasn't taken as much wear and tear on his body. I can you don't see, get the I, same production, I, but he yeah. doesn't have the same. You know, so maybe that year isn't that big a difference, and he's so cheap right now. So Emmanuel Sanders, you're talking about, right? right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no. I, this is, again, to reiterate what Jay Wayne said, this is why we don't go with a bunch of receivers early because we feel like you can get some good value right here in the middle of this thing. And then even further back, you'll see at the end of this draft, we just hammer receivers after receiver after receiver. And I have no problem with Marvin Jones being my first receiver on my team or, and or Demarius Thomas or Golden Tate. So I look forward to getting to this point in my draft. And most times I do have three running backs and a tight end. I, and I will sneak a Stefan Diggs in there if I feel like I'm my, I'm my back's against the wall. But <laughs> sometimes I, you get stuck in a no man's yeah, zone of running I, backs. I'll sneak a Diggs in there if I feel like I have to. But I, I more more than likely I get here. I got three running backs and a tight end, and I can't wait to put Marvin Jones yeah. on the team. So on to the next pick. Four players go off the board. It's Chubb. It's Ronald Jones. It's DJ Moore, and then Demarius Thomas right before. A couple of rookies and a veteran. We get to pick again. So now we're at six three. We're back up, and we got. Uh, these players to kind of sift through it's watson to uh, shepherd bobby woods fuller mccoy drake tevin coleman all still kind of hanging around so we start narrowing it down uh i guess the first question is is why not watson right i'll right, let well, big first, field this first, one. first first we did we, we got sniped on the back-to-back marvin jones demarius thomas thomas goes right in front of us and you're like all right well you know the the wide receiver earlier proponent will be like look you got caught sleeping at wide receiver and now you got you demarius thomas fell off and my first first response is i plug robert woods right into that spot and i'm super happy and mo- and al- almost every one of my mock drafts i got marvin jones and robert woods as my one two and i just literally couldn't be happier about it but to go to casey's question Jay Wayne's face is turning red, being like, I can't believe Deshaun Watson's still on the board. Let's take Deshaun Watson and get that weekly advantage at quarterback. And that was my 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 rebuttal to that was I understand. No. I understand that yet I I as I'm the last quarterback. I'm I'm gonna be the guy that takes last quarterback right. every draft. So it does I'm I'm let me just say that everybody knows. I was that late round quarterback before late round quarterback was a thing. But <laughs> I do, I do, it's true. I do know and realize, and will not pretend like it's not there. There is a weekly advantage to having the best quarterback, the, the two or you, three top end guys. You just, uh, yeah, and uh, yes, when Aaron Rodgers with, uh, with legs in every single season that Aaron Rodgers stays healthy, he is a one or two quarterback, and he's usually far away from the pack. And Russell Wilson is grinding. He's, his he's way really the, the only other one that stays consistently yeah, up he's in close that. to the pack. And and so and now you got Carson Wentz, who so at a points per game basis last year before he got hurt, he was twenty one point eight MVP candidate. He was crushing. Cam Newton's always up there at the top. He crushes. Deshaun Watson's here, and in in the five game sample that we got, or whatever it was, points per game, ridiculous, more than, more than everybody else. Absolutely, I'm not saying that there's not a advantage to be had, but the replacement level, like you, if you don't have that top quarterback and you drop down to 15 more spots, you're not losing that much. Is my only that's that's as far I'm gonna take that argument because you've all heard it from me before. I'm very very comfortable. Passing up on the quarterback here and taking a shot at somebody that can be in my my you know 
line up outside of the quarterback position. The yeah. more running backs and wide receivers I can have on my team that can potentially be stars, I'll fill in. And this and and, and another thing too, especially like this is a twelve man one quarterback startup here, and you've already seen. The quarterbacks, two quarterbacks went off in the fourth round. Russell Wilson went off in the fifth. Deshaun goes off right after us in the sixth. The, the, yes, the we don't take Deshaun. The, we don't. Yeah, spoiler, spoiler. We don't take Deshaun. But <laughs> yeah, the quarterbacks a, are pushed it's a down here. But like you, in a one quarterback twelve team league startup, you can literally punt the quarterback position, which you'll see us do, and. The other teams that don't get it completely right, the teams that have two good quarterbacks for some reason or the teams that roster three quarterbacks, like you don't get it completely right and now you need to make a trade and those quarterbacks are so devalued. The second yep. one, like there's teams that have plenty of – there's there's going to be a, a ridiculous secondary market on the quarterbacks that we can move from the guy that we <laughs> um, took last – as the basically last pick in the draft as a quarterback, and we can move up from him if we even needed to into another spot of a quarterback for sure. for hardly there, for pennies on a dollar. I'm in I'm in camp. Don't draft a quarterback. I've been not sure. drafting a quarterback forever. Like yeah. I'll go pick my quarterback and whoever I want to at at the end of the draft. Um, you there is points in the draft where I would would consider quarterbacks, and sometimes you get into a little bit of a no-man's land where you're kind of in between players where you value and they might be a little further down the list and maybe maybe I get a quarterback. Nine times out of ten, I'm not. Watson here at 6'3", just like when Cam Newton's being Cam Newton and being like the team who has Cam Newton and Cam Newton's on one of those seasons where he's absolutely crushing, that team's probably going to the championship. Yep. Like, And I, I think that there's definitely... I obviously had a small sample size with Watson, but averaging 24 points a game was more than everybody else, mm -hmm. way more than everybody else. Like Wentz had 21.8 and Wilson had 21, but a Raj cam Brady, all those other guys, 18 points a game. Like, mm -hmm. and I understand like at that point, all the rest of them are pretty much the same to me. Right. But if you can get, I mean, that's a, that's a huge advantage. 24 points as opposed mm. to 18. That's a pretty big advantage. And, and maybe in the, bigger sample size Watson doesn't average 24 yeah, points no, a game. It, it's never but, been, never been done before in the history of football. He but if he that. averages 21, 22 points a game, still but I mean, who was, who was stopping him? What What's to say that he's, when you saw him play last year, what's to say that he isn't going to average? He looked or get ridiculous. Better. Oh, I agree. He looked, he looked like Michael Jordan. And he, and he has, <laughs> and he has <laughs> legs Jordan. to run around to even give you further from, you know, to give you a further advantage. So I could see the reason why the maybe you would take, a Watson here, and I don't necessarily really have too much of a problem with it. Besides the fact that, yeah, I well, would, how come I couldn't get that vote? We go two to one against I would, Co here. Huh? Well, because I mean, I like you, I could still well, get. Well, let's not get ahead. I could still get stuff. Alex Smith in the back of this thing, and I'm and I'm okay with that. Yeah, and I can I can get my second or my fourth running back here, and I'm I'm definitely okay with that as well. Like this is I am too. This I, is the trade off that you have to give exactly. if you're taking it's a, a trade off. Quarterback. Exactly. Well said. There's if it's no, not Deshaun, I'm not taking a quarterback. Right. I don't want here. a quarterback who can't run around. Right. Yeah. If that those that's the that advantage eye. to me. Like give me Cam, give me Russell, Russell, Carson Wentz, Carson Wentz, a, -Rod. a a yeah. Give me those guys. Other than that, like I don't. I'll take my Brady in the. Yep. Wherever around I can get him in. Right. That's the trade. And the off. only time that I'm taking one of those quarterbacks is like I said, if I get into a little bit of a no man's land, which I'm not necessarily in that right now, but I'm not far away from it where I don't love like I like Bobby Woods a lot and I like Drake and I like Tevin Coleman, but it seems like Watson I wouldn't be that upset if if he ended up on our team here. Right. That the trade off is Tom Brady and Drew Brees go in the fourteenth round. Jared Goff, a young stud, not I wouldn't say stud, but a young starish type quarterback last year on the team that scored the most points in the league. Matt Ryan in the fifteenth, Philip Rivers in the sixteenth, Alex Smith in the eighteenth. Like that, that's the trade off. It's not that yeah. I don't think Deshaun Watson's awesome, and obviously, you know, Jay Wayne's a Clemson guy, but there's there's no arguing how incredible that Deshaun Watson was last year. And mm. if he comes back and he's playing on that pace, then he should have been taken in the third round. It's just it's that, that ACL. It's, it's, it's the injury. The He's getting the T.Y. The, treat or not the T.Y. The if if my thing and I, it, yeah the David Johnson the I'm a little I'm I'm very very aggressive on the later the later the later the later the quarterback because I know my teams that have been successful doing that but 
as long as there's players that I think are every week starters or could be every week starters, I still have to pass on the quarterbacks. Even if I think this guy, oh, I can't believe he shouldn't be here. I got to take him. You know, like yeah, I, but I mean, you could you could still get Watson and and the next four or five picks still get players who are similar to these every week starters that you're talking about. No, exactly. It, I completely agree. Just I got one more of them. Just one more chance. Yeah, All I right. mean that's the trade off. Yep. So we don't take the Sean Bummer. <laughs> We're, we're so basically it comes down to do we want to take a wide receiver or, court or running back here yeah so we narrow it down to kind of McCoy still sticking around which I don't know if he necessarily sticks around in too many drafts until the sixth round uh, I think he will I think by the time it gets here I think by the time people are really in deep knee deep in startups I feel like there's you know McCoy's not going to get any younger no. and the, the the growing hate on the on the surrounding what cast the Bills and, have and going Buff- on yeah the Buffalo surrounding cast around him and obviously that points to volume and it's not like the the surrounding crack cast was awesome last year but he lost Tyrod Taylor which makes it tougher they on lose some offensive on linemen as well yeah and oh yeah they have no uh, receivers really so we we narrow it down to three it's Woods Bobby Woods Drake and McCoy we and then we take McCoy out for the reason that we just stated like I think there's plenty of volume I still think Shady's going to be just fine but it's maybe it's going to be more like the Todd Gurley that we saw in 2016 where the teams are just stacking the boxes against him he's still going to be a fairly productive running back but he's not going to be the McCoy of last year or the years before because they're just not going to be anywhere to go right everyone's well, and, just and it's not that I don't I, I dude it wouldn't be surprising at all if LaShawn McCoy is still mid RB1 it's not that I don't think it's just that because of the way we have our t- we're not chasing backs here right you know we got three we got two high end RB1s and a back end RB1 with upside and I feel like that putting LaShawn McCoy on the team would be a redundancy in a good way it would be like hey look at us look at our running backs but because we're in a sixth round and we have three good three running backs that are up that are so still young like Jarek mckinnon's the oldest running back we got and he yeah. you know so like we got a second year player and a rookie and a you know a stud young tight end and marvin jones you know so like i feel really good about this core that we've got to move forward with and it's like I feel like we don't necessarily need even all that production that LaShawn McCoy could give us. We don't need it because even if he does crush, he's still he's close. It's going to be 30. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like he, and I, like there's no chance that McCoy's higher on this list next year than he is now. The the guy that we're I, w- I was really trying to talk everybody into Robert Woods here, but we with Kenyon Drake, it's like what he showed us it, and and we've a couple uh it's probably two months ago now but the the efficiency stats that casey read off for us for what Kenyon drake was doing if the, you know they bring in kalen balage who's one of the least touted running back prospects in this class and they bring in you know retiree frank gore and it's like yeah that sounds on paper that looks like competition and I'll, yeah the the frank gore what, what do you call him jet what's the inconvenient the truth. inconvenient it's not truth. what jason calls him it's what that's, he is that's what he it could is. be very inconvenient truthy for this pick for us but if Kenyon drake were to take forward with what he put on late last yeah. year tape pass catching ability your running I, running ability efficiency ratings like evading tackles and broken tackles and just like what can you drake could floor. be here in the ppr well, floor three, right. three things three things with with drake really is is well one one one's with this team like we don't need another running back per, t- per se at exactly. this point so we, we can kind of take a swing on what drake might be as well as much as you just said we Perfect. we don't need to take mccoy because we have some backs already and he's going to be old Drake's just kind of getting his shot here and could yeah, be was he even, 23 years old could be even ascending higher right. and I don't I get and the other thing is is I don't think that he needs to have 20 to 25 carries to make your right starting you roster on your wide team and send him I on think a he go can do route. multiple things and hit home runs for you he was a, he was awesome with the ball in his hands regardless of how many times he got it in a game um, but I will say I think this is probably the first misstep that not necessarily a misstep but I think I would wouldn't mind having Robert Woods here maybe over Kenyon Drake at this point in time. I don't it let me the the reason I completely agree with what you're saying there and one of the reasons is because two or three rounds later the ability the the players that we could double down on we get some far, good swings are running back we get some later really this, yes and and there's nothing that said obviously and, and but you this don't is know at this when, point. when when we were in this draft when we were in this mock draft we were talking about all these different options and I was like in the years past Casey and I do a lot of FFP PC leagues and if maybe if nothing else it's just the addiction of the startup 
And in the sixth and the seventh and the eighth round, almost inevitably, those picks are just interchangeable on personal preference, you know? So, like, we take Kenyon Drake here at 6'3", and there's nothing that says he couldn't have been on the board at 7'10". We just, right. we took him, and then when we got back on the board at 7'10", Robert Woods was gone. We were hoping that maybe he would hang around. So, it's like, yeah. of what Casey, I agree with what Casey's saying. If we take Robert Woods and we get we pair him up, because that's kind of, I like, that's my favorite pairing for the late wide receivers late being round five and six. Marvin Jones, take Robert Woods, and then there's a chance that we still get a chance at Kenyon. Well, Drake. yeah, it was kind of in this particular draft, the way the board was shaping up and the way that the picks were getting crossed off, and you could see how they have the ra- ratings kind of. But the cool thing, uh, ratings kind of were, you could see that it was getting close to being all those guys. The cool thing with the fantasy pros things, it just doesn't go down that list. Right. It kind of randomly will select guys. So uh, it could have went either way here. Like we could have taken Woods and Drake could have still been there. Yep. Or, you know, we were hoping we, we were hoping that Woods would still be there at seven ten, yeah, and we could take him. So I would I think I would have rather taken Woods here and just see if Drake would have stuck around. And by the way, the board unfolded from the computer's picks. It looked like Drake probably would have hung around, but you just don't know. And like what Jay Wayne was saying while you were talking there, you don't know how the other the rest of the board then after these picks is going to unfold as well. Yeah, we got right. we did end up getting a lot of swings on some running backs, but and if you, you just could guarantee don't know. me, if you could guarantee me that you were we were going to get the the running backs. Through, I don't want to spoil it who we get who we ended up taking, but if if you could guarantee me we get all these guys, then maybe I wouldn't have to take that swing on a solid right. fourth running back, which I feel awesome as Kenyon Drake with sure. my fourth running back. So I that, I don't hate having Drake, but maybe we made a slight misstep here in this draft, and yep. I wouldn't mind having Bobby Woods and hopefully getting and Drake exactly at the seven ten pick. Why you do this? That's exactly why you do this to get in here because like, Drake ends up on a lot of my teams. I just like the prospect. I like what he can do. Uh, everything that I saw from him at the end of last year was awesome. I, and I don't think that for, even if Frank Gore comes in and gets twelve carries a game, I don't think that that hurts. Drake too too much I mean obviously it hurts in the opportunity category but I think he's going to be a home run hitter and I think he's great with the ball in his hand so he doesn't need plus there's a PPR floor there that I like and something that I haven't heard one person say obviously you got the targets that that Jarvis Landry walks away with and people want to figure out how they're getting filled up and is Devontae Parker going to just absolutely crush with volume or is Kenny Stills going to take a 50 target upswing which he's already getting a ton of targets for a guy that who gets no respect and you got Albert Wilson and Danny Amendola coming in what says that Kenyon Drake can't get 30 more targets right I think it's going to get spread out is the answer exactly so if you divvy that up a little bit then you know, and if the court, this was Jay Cutler's targets last year too. A guy who had already retired, and you know, even if he comes back, he's got six. You know, he's smoking cigarettes on the sidelines. <laughs> Man doesn't care. Smoking Jay. You know, so like I feel like that the Kenny again. We don't need him, and I, that's why I love this pick because we've already got a such solid foundation. And yeah, we I think we Robert Woods would have been a smarter pick for us here based on the hindsight of the next couple picks and who was there for us to choose from. But a a pick at Kenyon Drake here. We don't need him. And if he hits, then we can do, we basically can do anything we want with our roster because people are going to be coming to us for running backs. Right. You know? So I, I, I love it. And then so we can move forward knowing that we got Kenyon Drake, maybe should have taken Robert Woods, but still I feel like we're in really good spot. Absolutely. People are definitely going to be coming to us for running backs. Well, the, uh, r- real quick before we go to break, I want the, if you click on the fa- on Bobby Woods, when the fantasy pros thing, there is somebody at Fantasy mm. Pros who say, suggests that Robert Woods is merely going to be a wide receiver three, a low end wide receiver three, which I think that it's pretty, pretty outrageous if you look at what Robert Woods did and what really changed besides Brandon Cooks coming to town. Well, he got sw- if, if Brandon Cooks comes to town and Sammy Watkins is still there, then I uh, fine, right. fine. But uh, Sammy Watkins leaves, Rock, Robert uh, Bro- uh, Cooks comes in, so like Robert Woods is still in the same exact position yeah. he was in. Maybe and, maybe Cooks is better at the role that Sammy Watkins was playing last year, but I don't think he's a better receiver. Like he's not a, a as he's not big and strong and physical and he's probably just as fast as Brandon Cooks was I think Brandon Cooks is going to be very good in that role Maybe, but I just yeah. don't know how much that really like it doesn't really change anything for me I think Robert Woods still crushed he's still open in the middle of the field he still had plenty of games where he was a wide receiver one if if Robert Woods and yeah if he doesn't get hurt but if Robert Woods doesn't hurt his shoulder 
then he carries more teams. He's on that. He's in those bunch of players, the handful of players that if you got this guy, obviously, you know, especially last year where a startup or whatever, the rookie running backs were taken. Like if you got lucky and you have Kareem Hunt or Alvin Kamara on your team, you probably went to the playoffs. And, and, you know, if you got lucky and Todd Gurley was your second round pick last year, you went to the playoffs and you probably won, you know, like Robert Woods was one of those players where like, if you were lucky enough to have him and pay $0 for him last year, he puts together ten or twelve weeks of ridiculous awesomeness, you know. Really, and if he doesn't hurt, squad. if he doesn't hurt your sh- hurt his shoulder right there in the back two thirds of the season or whatever it was, like he's he's more in the limelight right. of where fantasy season matters more, yeah. and he gets more credit than he did, you know. Like he's very underrated right now. I, I, he's still only twenty six, yeah. And he had we've been we, in the league for five years. He's he did some things in Buffalo that most did nobody else in Buffalo did. And 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 I feel like the system that's in place and and for the Rams, then I think it only gets better for Robert Woods. Yeah, I mean, I think it's uh, I think it's a, I think Bobby Woods is about to crush it. I do too. Can't miss. I don't think so. All right. Well, that'll do it for uh, this first episode. Which is gonna we're already an hour and a half into this thing. We should break it up, make another one. So let's uh, let's go ahead and call this a wrap. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. If you're on uh, iTunes, please give us a five-star review. Greatly appreciated. Thank you to everyone that's already done so. If you're on YouTube, please hit subscribe. We're on any of your platforms of choice, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio. iHeartRadio. We're on iHeartRadio. Yep, that that (laughs) one too. Thanks for helping, Case. Podbean. Uh, We're also on Twitter. (laughs) Idiot. At the FF Dynasty. You can find us individually at IMC Myers, at Dynasty Big Co., at Jay Wayne's World. Till next time, you've been listening to the FF Dynasty's Married to the Game 